This is the Eco Arc, planned to be one of the greenest buildings in Asia and possibly the world. It aims to be a glowing example of how to turn a problem into a solution. But it's going to be a two-year nightmare for the man who's designed it. I think it'll work, but you know, our solution uh, has some problem to it. And a very steep learning curve for the man who's paying for it. I don't know what I got myself into. They face a long list of challenges from both nature and their colleagues. And even they don't know if they're going to pull it off. No one actually believes the project will work. They're entering unknown territory, trying to accomplish the impossible, turning Taiwan's trash into treasure. The Eco Arc has to be the spectacular showpiece of the Taipei International Flora Expo. A horticultural extravaganza on an Olympic scale. On paper, it's going to be a nine-story high exhibition hall covering an area of almost seven basketball courts. It's planned as the world's greenest plastic pavilion to be built largely out of one and a half million recycled drink bottles. The designer's choice of such a revolutionary new building material tops the list of challenges they have to overcome. The safety of six million visitors expected at the flower show will depend on recycled rubbish. Will and an experimental plastic building 28 meters high be able to withstand everything that nature can throw at it, including earthquakes and typhoons? Will it melt or erupt into an inferno if there's a fire? The upcoming expo is all about environmental awareness, so the eco arc has to be green and sustainable. This means using low carbon building techniques and maintaining a zero carbon footprint when the eco arc is running. The lighting system has to power itself. The exhibition space has to be cooled without using air conditioning. And at the end of the expo, this pavilion made of recycled materials has to be broken down to be reassembled elsewhere. Then there's one more huge hurdle. Taiwan's senior officials have to be convinced that all these new and exciting ideas will work or they'll bring the project to a halt. Designer Arthur Huang has to solve all these problems with very limited time and money. Creativity is always very uh, intense when you have a huge constraint, a huge constraint in terms of budgets and also in terms of time. And that forces all the engineers being pushed out on the one goal. That forces us to make decisions very quickly. And that, I think, it's a, uh, it's a very powerful tool for designers and innovators. The tobacco leaf-shaped island of Taiwan lies in the Pacific Ocean, 160 kilometers off the southeast coast of mainland China. It's a third larger than the size of the state of Maryland. But because so much of Taiwan is mountainous, its 23 million people squeeze into less than a third of the land. The capital, Taipei, sits at the northern tip, where 2.6 million Taiwanese jostle for space in a modern, productive city. Over the last 60 years, Taiwan has made a swift transition from agriculture to industry. It's now a world leader in manufactured goods. It's the largest producer of LCD panels. Taiwanese companies building 90% of the world's laptop computers. Today's Taipei is a vibrant mix of technological innovation and traditional Taiwanese culture. This healthy tension between the new ideas of creative youth and the wisdom of their elders has resulted in some spectacular successes. 
the Taipei 101 building, until recently, was the world's tallest. It's a symbol of Taiwan's economic and social stability, but growth always comes at a price. The side effects of rapid industrialization and consumerism accumulate at a frightening rate. The citizens of Taiwan try to cope with the plastic trash they generate. 90,000 tons of recyclable plastic bottles are collected each year. That would fill three Taipei 101 buildings, or encircle Taiwan more than a thousand times. Plastic was part of Taiwan's prosperity, but now it's a growing problem. The figures have the island's leaders worried, and like Taipei's mayor, they're looking for solutions. Uh, the plastic uh, bags and plastic bottles, we, we were the plastic kingdom in the past. So right now we begin to think about how to make environmental protection and the economic growth hand in hand. Enter architect and engineer Arthur Huang, a firm believer in true sustainability. He and his team are under pressure to make the EcoArc green to build and green to run. But pressure sometimes sparks genius. They have an idea that could kill two birds with one stone. Could they tackle Taiwan's trash by turning it into a tribute to green architecture? Arthur didn't need to look far for inspiration. What we did is we literally just look into our trash can, and that's how we started. Um, our engineering team uh, loves drinking bottled teas, and this is such a culture in Taiwan. So we thought, okay, maybe we can take this material and turn that into something useful. 